Yeah, David Dread of Steel Pulse, and I'm saying heal to Lion Voice because it's time that the lion have its voice, have its own story. Says I'm stepping out here. Hear me now. Yeah, the lion's voice. Rawr. <laughs> <laughs> I and I interest is one Ethiopia without apology. You know what I mean? The Romos are I and I brothers. You know, the Eritreans are I and I brothers. The Somalia are I and I brothers. The Afar, the Goragi, the Omo Valley. You know what I mean? I and I cite them as one. Ethiopia is a microcosm for the entire continent. You know, the house of the Ibu, the Ashanti, the Ga, the Zulu, the Hosa. All of them is I and I. You know what I mean? So we want to make that clear. Right now, we're supposed to be focusing on one Africa, African unity, because then these things will not matter. You know what I mean? But we're still, some of us are still clinging. And this is what His Majesty was bringing us slowly out of this mind state. That's the people first choice. Lion voice, make the lion let them feel nice. Lion voice, with the lion cubs we sacrifice. Lion voice, got to show the people them the lion. Lion voice. <laughs> Never conquer the mountains, thousands of years and counting. Ethiopia rise again unto the world. Now we are announcing. Them a plan for war, we a plan for peace. And now we see them wanna go dismantle the base. When the trumpet sound and the violence cease, how we same one go build up the cities. Well, them a plan for war, we a plan for peace. And now we see them wanna go dismantle the base. Rastafari crown as the prince of peace. Him tell the youths them fi build up them countries. Well, solar energy that them a see. The whole city powered by the sun's energy. The road them make out the hemp and concrete Neighborhoods full of fruit trees that taste sweet The youths put down them guns, them harvest and a reap The beautiful gardens will line every street Tired of the bloodshed, them done with the beef Not even animals feed them, them burn out the meat Well people say hi, they still I see, I see Nile When they see say him a treat the dirt like a child Peace on earth from the banks of the Nile That's why we give him thanks in style See, say Babylon now web and them a stockpile Babylon now wicked kill them brother and smile I and I and I and Babylon a reptile Them a plan for shed blood, we got plans for the soil Them a plan for war, we a plan for peace And now we see them wanna go dismantle the base When the trumpet sound and the Greetings in that divine name of his imperial majesty Emperor Haile Selassie I the first Glory and honor in the name of his chosen queen, Empress Waziro Menen. My name is Kwasi Bansu, aka the Chasmash Kwasi, aka Ras Kwasi, aka the Reading Ras, aka the Pan African Happy Man. I'm a creative industry attorney, I'm an author, I'm an actionist, I'm an artist. But right now, I am the host of the Lion's Voice. Welcome. To the lion's voice network and welcome to the lion voice our flagship program here where we talk about topics relevant to the global rastafari family and in doing so we are confident that we serve the wider pan-african family and humanity in general um, because rastafari as we know represent the people um, in, its, in its purest sense of that representation, meaning you have Rastafari is very diverse. You know, if you look within the Rastafari family, we are so different. You know, we all share that love of the emperor, but there are so many facets and that is how humanity is as well. So we have a lot of interest and that is one thing that I want to show from this channel. We're not just reggae music, smoke ganja. Um, people, you know, Rastafari, there are so much um, topics and give thanks to the listeners who have commented. One sister said she loves seeing all of the professional 
Rastafari that you see on the channel. And we're going to show that. We're going to talk to the grassroots as well. You know, we're, we're not uh, just in one because we know many farmers and ones who are in touch with the earth that may not have formal education. They're going to be on this platform as well. But we're not going to put Rastafari on a, in a box uh, on this channel. That is one thing that we will not do. Big up the Lion Pride. How do you become a part of the Lion Pride? If you subscribe, you are part of the Lion's Pride. And big up the Lion Pride on Patreon. We're growing literally every day now. Um, the, the, the growth has accelerated. So again, we're on our road to 10,000. Our Patreon, we've dropped to only three fire angels. So if you love the content, please support us in the Patreon. $10. $25, even $5, you know, if you give it to buy a, a, a cup of coffee and you deem that we bring some value uh, in the content space, then support the platform. Um, our goal is to build a Rastafari owned production company on the continent. And we believe that, or we know more than believe, we know that Rastafari voice has a place in the greater Pan African and human voice out there the lions must tell their own story so saying all of that today's topic we are going to do part two of an episode that's doing very well um, in reference to the current crisis in ethiopia is ethiopia on the brink of civil war these are the questions that we are asking and we are looking um, i want to just note that Ethiopia was just admitted into the BRICS conglomeration of countries. Um, for those who are not aware, um, I'll play a little clip that gives some background on Ethiopia's admission to BRICS. And One of those six new countries that's set to join BRICS is Ethiopia. And let's get reaction now from Abbas Ababa. That's uh, with Clotilde Azar. Clotilde, what more can you tell us? Uh, um, this is a great moment for Ethiopia, said the Prime Minister on the social media X, the new Twitter. He declared uh, that Ethiopia stands ready uh, to cooperate with all for an inclusive and prosperous uh, global order. Uh, two months ago, Ethiopia applied uh, to join the BRICS to straighten its economic uh, position through an international institution uh, that can defend its uh, interests. It's uh, now a done deal. Uh, the country was favored by uh, China, major investor in Ethiopia. Yesterday, uh, the Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed and the President of China uh, met uh, and they expressed their uh, willing to straighten uh, their partnership uh, on multilateral platforms. Uh, China has also announced uh, the suspension of Ethiopia uh, debt uh, repayments for a 2023-2024 period. Uh, this is a good news for Ethiopia, which uh, uh, needs to recover from the two years war in Tigray, uh, which deepened its debt and slowed exports and the job markets. Uh, for the BRICS, uh, the country represents an important potential market in terms of investment and trade. Thanks to its rapid uh, growth and very large population, Ethiopia is the second most populous country in Africa. Clotilde, thank you for that. Clotilde has our reporting for us from Addis Ababa. Um, if you love the format where we, we look at different news and we comment, um, let I and I know down in the comments because we're going to be doing more of that. Of course, um, we utilize fair use under the copyright um, law that allows you to make commentary. And we always, anytime you see images here, they're for educational purposes. Um, so we, we try to stay within the, the, the fair use um, add some value. We don't just have the image. We're explaining what's in the image or we're talking about something. So we try to stay within the confines as, as of fair use as a creative industry attorney. Uh, now, say, that being said, uh, we're going to watch some uh, news clips. Uh, I want to dive deeper into this Ethiopia crisis. So, you know, I found a clip that represents some of the different voices and the talking points. And then we're going to relate it forward to the history of Emperor Menelik as it um, is written in Haile Selassie's Ethiopia. Um, because again, this provides an opportunity. You know, this is why 
books like Haile Selassie, Ethiopia and other books on Ethiopian history are so important to under overstand the context um, of what's happening. And even though I wrote my book as an epic story, you know, it's drawing on actual history. I provide my citations in the book. So you can see the sources of where the information is coming from, do your own research, even though it's written, like I say, as an epic fantasy and you try to, um, you know, uh, highlight the splendor of the, of the, and use language that highlights the splendor and the, the mystics and the, you know, all of the different contexts of the different historical elements. So um, we're going to do a little bit of that. So we give thanks um, again for ones because uh, what we are seeing now and it became so clear is a resumption of Ethiopia um, falling into that era of princes where it was war between the kingdoms. Um, this is not the this is not a new um, occurrence. And if you don't know the history, then you would think this is a new occurrence. This is a return to the status quo and this to I also shows the power of his majesty because during his reign there was relative peace there was rebellion but his majesty within one generation that he was able to bring Ethiopia to that uh, relative peace um, and stability to allow the development uh, to happen um, so that even before this Ethiopia was one of the fastest developing economies um, building upon that same infrastructure that was set by his imperial majesty and this is what the detractors why they have a hard time the people who call his majesty dictator and tyrant this is why they have a hard time because the works are so tremendous it's very difficult to argue with work and as Rastafari brethren and sistren particularly the Rastafari man this channel is 97 percent male I'm, I'm working on it, Bridgen, and, and I'm working, sister. so please subscribe if you're a sister. But this is why for the Rastafari man, your work is so important because no matter what the detractors say, work is there, it, it's documented. Um, the public education system, Ethiopia Airlines, the public waterworks infrastructure, um, all of these things that we're not thinking about day to day were um, put in place during the reign of his imperial majesty um, the highest of himself shall establish I and I foundations of the organization of African unity Addis Ababa now is the capital of Africa um, all of the African countries have embassies in Addis um, so it's, it has that Washington DC vibration that was established by his imperial majesty along with the strength of Ketama Yeferu um, so uh, and big up, you know, because I see some Ethiopians commenting, welcome to the Lion Voice. I'm here in the DMV. I have a lot of Ethiopian virgin and sistren um, and, and, and people I consider family. So we're no stranger to the Ethiopian um, community being here in the Washington, D.C. area. So welcome here, um, virgin. I'm giving my opinion. This is not a political channel. So... We're not Amhara, we're not Tigray, we're not Aromo. You know, we are the exile who are looking at Mama Africa and looking at the throne room and looking at the highest region uh, in war at the same time as Africa is rising. And we are concerned. And this is why we're going to provide our thoughts on, on the matter. So for my Rastafari family, you know, I want to just keep the item informed on what's happening in Zion. Uh, and we call it, you know, the whole of Africa is Zion to, to Rastafari. Let's just be clear. But the Ethiopia represents that throne, what we would call the throne, the Ark of the Covenant, the throne of David, um, you know, the biblical prophecy um, that the, the David would have a man child to sit upon the throne as long as the sun and the moon endure. You know, we've seen that only happen in the Ethiopian Solomonic dynasty. Um, you know, the only thing that um, authenticates the biblical account in terms of prophecy. And again, hard to argue with the legacy the Ethiopians themselves speak. So this is not outside Europeans coming and telling the Ethiopians who they are. 
This is the Ethiopians never been conquered, declaring who they are. And this was done in the constitution of his imperial majesty that referenced um, the dynasty of Solomon and Queen Makeda of Ethiopia, um, the unity of that dynasty. This was um, submitted in the United Nations as part of the charter, um, you know, one of the foundation countries. This was written, no other country could make that claim. Um, so Ethiopia is what it is in real life. You can disagree, but the, the reality, observable reality is there. We are those who are very concerned with war. We see what's happening in Haiti. We see what's happening in Ethiopia. We see what's now threatening to happen in Niger. As Africa, this great sleeping giant, 1.3 plus billion people, most under the age of 30, 75 percent. I believe under the age of 30, these youths rising right now. Um, there's war being instigated and we know that for there to be a war, there has to be funding and we have to look at what the interest. So we are, you know, asking our Ethiopian brethren in the Amhara region, in Tigray, in the government, let us mediate and reason you see how tigray and the government have to end up sit down and reason and you know what i mean it always going to end up with negotiation so let's start there respectfully you know i and i said peace is is the only solution because ethiopia is the seat ethiopia development is a light to all of africa we have the renaissance dam getting ready to go on stream that's going to light up all of east africa you know electricity cheap power when you look at the united states and niagara falls and the hoover dam and all of these things you have to look at um what these things mean in terms of standard of living of the people and the dam was proposed from his majesty time in fact the work for the dam had begun in 1930 before the italians invaded his majesty actually had to suit um, on some of those contracts because the, the companies were paid and never completed work and enough things happened. You know what I mean? So these are part of the history, but the dam was from His Majesty vision and time. You know what I mean? Africa rising, uh, Zion on earth, you know, hydroelectricity in terms of power generation, lift the people until alternate forms of power can be, um, you know, developed. So um, we give thanks you know what I mean that we are able to reason about these things so before we go any further I want to just go into these clips um, again for my Rastafari family Pan-African family I think it's important that we hear the Ethiopian perspectives on these things in common is that not correct Yes, Andrea. Essentially, the war in northern Ethiopia implicated the Amhara forces because they were fighting in self-defense. They were invaded by several forces, including the Tigray People's Liberation Front and the Oromo Liberation Army. And as you know, this actually lasted for over two years since November 2020. And fortunately, a lot of crimes were committed and war crimes included within the Amhara and Afar regions. So as this was happening, there was this misconception that Amhara is support for the Abi, but that is absolutely unfounded because the Amhara region actually had the largest anti-government protests, including the ones that led to the current round of fighting in the Amhara region. For example, early 2023, protesters came to the streets and led peaceful civil demonstrations across, across more than 30 cities and towns in the Amhara region, voicing their discontent with the Abiy regime's policies, including decades of genocide committed against the Amhara people, including in the Oromia region of the country. And so this was just one of the issues. There was also political marginalization, subjugation, uh, arrests of political prisoners. These, these include opposition figures, journalists, professors, students, and sometimes human rights activists and people who are simply profiled for being Amhara. So the reason for the current fighting, uh, I think, shows that, or the, the current fighting shows that these forces were not allied to the Abiy regime, and they do not see the Abiy government as a legitimate uh, government. And we can even look okay. back to the Pretoria deal, so which ended. What the Bridget is saying is that the, the final, um, the final forces 
are not looking at this government as legitimate and even though they worked with the government against Tigray uh, when Tigray had the uprising they were really fighting to defend their own interests um, and that they were not in support of the, the government people will argue that point but it's important to know these parts and when we talk about Amhara for those who are within the history and we're going to go into Haile Selassie's Ethiopia we're talking about Shawa you know we're talking about the kingdom of Shoa, really, you know, and when we're talking about Tigray, you're talking about the thing kingdom of Tigray. When you're talking about Aromo, you'd be talking about kingdoms like Jima, you know, you'd be talking about, um, you know, kingdoms in Wolo, you know, what I mean, you'd be talking about those um, different um, kingdoms. So these are all ancient realms unto themselves, kingdoms that have always been at war with each other or for hundreds and hundreds of years were at war up into the modern era um, you know the era of, of these priestly warrior kings as I call them um, all of these kingdoms were war and at different times they held power and it's important to note that most of the emperors have Oromo blood they have different you know Tigray blood so you know these kind of differences in and of themselves are really just um, almost like um, you know a, a, a alpha versa q or you know what i mean fraternal fraternities fighting them one another you know what i mean these are the same bloodline same people um through hundreds of years of intermarriage um you know in ethiopia the bloodlines are all you know more closely aligned than they are distinct and it, that has been proven scientifically but let us continue which ended the, the war in northern Ethiopia in which Amhara has called for independent representation to promote justice and accountability and to look after their interests because they did not trust the IB government to do that for mm -hmm. them and they, they were not really included in the Pretoria Agreement, so they seem to feel that they were kind of thrown under the bus um, in that process by not being really... So, um, the Pretoria Agreement that she's talking about was an agreement that was signed by the, the, uh, the peace talks between the, the Tigray, TPLF, um, uh, Tigray Liberation Front, um, and the Abi uh, government. There was a peace that was um, uh, made it out in Pretoria in South Africa, peace accord, um, fighting sea. So that's what they're talking about there. Not being able to participate. So help us understand then how much you think the Fano forces now really represent all Amaran people. Are they united around the cause that the Fano are now going to battle for? Uh, certainly, the Fano, when we talk about the Fano, it's important to understand these are everyday men and women who have taken up private arms. These are their, their own private arms, oftentimes very outdated rifles for the self-defense of their communities. And this is a cultural practice by the Amhara people that dates back many centuries, including from the time of the Second World War, when Ethiopia was actually invaded by fascist Italy. And so the Fano took up arms to defend their homes. And this is what's, what we're seeing currently as the Abi regime has waged a genocidal war on the Amhara region. And this is waged on for many uh, months now. But what's interesting is that the Fano are actually seen as the only reliable mechanism to look after the safety and protection of the Amhara people. They do not trust federal forces to do this for them, as over the past five to six years, the federal forces have not only failed to protect Amharas throughout the country, but have actually been complicit in the human rights violations against them. Okay. So the Fano are essentially seen as freedom fighters, not as, uh, you know, just your your regular type of militia group that is it, how they're somehow okay. portray portrayed to be at times. Uh, let me turn to Gebre Christos, because the fear, as you know, among Amara is that without their militia, yeah, that name, the Gabriel Christos, and I see the bridging. You're going to see him. He has locks, it looks like, too. Um, these are all Ethiopians abroad. We like to hear um, the different perspectives, you know what I mean? So that we can, um, you know, add some nuance as we are looking. Um, because, again, this is geopolitics 
on the chessboard. They're trying their best to destabilize Ethiopia. This started when they, they brought in this ethnic constitution. His Majesty warned them, do not divide Ethiopia by tribal lines. That was one of the um, things that was, you know, from the granting of the first constitution. And they didn't listen. And this is the, the natural, so we're seeing the natural um, conclusion, a uh, cycle of endless war, um, divide and rule. Uh, so let's listen to this next version because, you know, the first version obviously pro Fano, um, but again, we want to have a balanced conversation and then we're going to show from Menelik time, you know what I mean, the rocky road that we have to travel. That Abiy Ahmed is, is trying to integrate into the national forces, they will be left more vulnerable to attacks by other surrounding forces, mainly Tigrayans. Would they be more vulnerable? No, they wouldn't. Um, the Amharas have never been really threatened by Tigrayans. I think it's just uh, important to understand the, uh, what is at the heart of the Amhara discontent. It's not what uh, um, you call uh, my colleague here uh, is saying, but it's just um, uh, the reduction of the Amhara dominance. And, and I just want to say I love how they are respectful, and you'll see that how the interaction. Sometimes I've watched these back and forth with Ethiopian family, and it can get very contentious. They all had different points, and they were very respectful. So love that. We just want to say that dominance in Ethiopia in 1991 and the uh, installment of the federal order that has basically been the central point of Amhara discontent because that meant that you know they lost well not lost actually they still are but the 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 undisputed, undisputed dominance that they had before you know controlling the entire Ethiopia as they wish yeah and everyone else doing their bidding is a central point in this argument and so to, to what is you know regaining that they have done so i want to address that so you can see a little bias there because you're saying that how i want to control the whole country of everybody doing their bidding we can't ignore that uh, emperor johannes was from tigray he did you know what i mean he governed in the same way emperors of old you know, um, Emperor Tiedros was not from Amhara region either. Um, you know, I mean, coming from Lasta. So, you know, it's a little bit disingenuous um, to say like it's just the Amhara. This is the, the, you know, for those who watch Game of Thrones, you know what I mean? Whoever sit in that seat um, historically, in that throne of David, governed the realm, governed the empire, and the empire was made of many nations. This is what, you know, we have to understand, you know, it was uh, evolved into a nation state, but this is the ancient empire of Ethiopia. So to say that it's just an Amhara thing, and then also remember, Ailis Lassi have Tigray, if you look in his background, through Ras Mokonen, he has Goragi, he has Aromo. So, you know, when we're looking at the Solomonic line, you're looking at all of the tribes then, or all of the kingdoms. Um, intermix so it's all this is the politics part of it so you know big up Virgin of him locks and thing and look rootical and I'm sure all of these are very wonderful people but I just want to point out that is not accurate based on the genealogy of the ancient kings uh, they have done everything possible they could do they aligned uh, with the algorithm and they fed it, they supported it uh, because they believe that it is going to attack Tigray, which they blame at the code of the, uh, the installment of federal order in Ethiopia. So their issue is really uh, the, uh, the configuration of Ethiopia and not because there is really any grievance. Uh, I mean, they aren't like any other Ethiopia. Ethiopia is a very horrible uh, country. It's just always uh, crimes, you know, violence in Ethiopia. But the Amhara has a unique uh, demand, and that is the Amhara elite. I mean, in this case, when I say Amhara, uh -huh. to regain the lost influence, the lost uh, power. And now they uh, were supporting until now Abiy Ahmed. And now they feel like they have uh, attained what they wanted in Tigray. Okay. This, 
Can I put them? Right. <laughs> Robel seems to think they were never supporting uh, Abiy Ahmed, uh, regardless of, of what the impression from the outside might be, because they did fight against the Tigrayans somewhat together. And, and to be fair, um, I think that Abiy, uh, Prime Minister Abiy, was supported widely when he first came to power. That was the energy, you know, we felt here in uh, Washington, D.C. Um, region. Now, I don't know, I can't speak on the ground um, what were the facts. You know, I think everyone was hopeful, um, at least initially. So, you know, when the bridge and sir said, Abby never had power, because we want to be balanced, you know, even though we love Fanon because they are pro Haile Selassie and Menelik II. And, you know, uh, and that history is very close to I and I as Rastafari. I and I interest is one Ethiopia without apology. You know what I mean? The Romos are I and I brothers. You know, the Eritreans are I and I brothers. The Somalia are I and I brothers. The Afar, the Goragi, the Omo Valley. You know what I mean? I and I cite them as one. Ethiopia is a microcosm for the entire continent. You know, the house of the Ibo, the Ashanti, the Ga, the Zulu, the Hosa. All of them is I and I. You know what I mean? So we want to make that clear. Right now, we're supposed to be focusing on one Africa, African unity, because then these things will not matter. You know what I mean? But we're still, some of us are still clinging. And this is what His Majesty was bringing us slowly out of this mind state. Um, this is why he said, let us maintain, you know, Haile Selassie was one of those who said maintain the colonial borders, not because... Um, he supported the Berlin Conference, but because he knew that um, before we attain the unity, if we try to deal with the border issue, with all of these kingdoms, Africa's made up of probably hundreds of thousands of kingdoms, you know what I mean? If we start focusing on where borders are drawn and resources and things, that can be a cycle of endless war. If we're unified, then it becomes less... Um, germane in terms of the borders because we don't really you know i mean i live in dc but maryland and dc now fight over anything because it's the same you know what i mean um in terms of uh right to travel do come um, conduct business and all of these things you know what i mean it's just a walk literally down the street for i and i to go to maryland so um that is how we want africa um country to country where um, just like uh, Europe during the uh, European Union. So that is what we're saying, but let's continue. Uh, in the two year war there, but uh, let me turn to Ledet because we have the Tigrayans fighting the government. We now have the Amara fighting the government. Has the federal government under Abiy Ahmed made it worse for Ethiopia or was there just potentially maybe never a way really to unite what is such a fractured country thanks andrea um i think uh, the abi uh, administration uh, uh, is historically the first um, government that was brought uh, by the power of the people uh, so uh, our colleague here just said that uh, the amara region uh, you, you know uh, did not uh, bring this but uh, it's less than 2 years ago that uh, uh, dr abi was elected uh, by uh, by ethiopia uh, so uh, if you do not like uh, an administration that you voted for, the first and foremost thing is not uh, to start up uh, arms. That's not the way uh, to uh, make any changes in this uh, current administration because there is... Let me just say I agree in principle with what the sister is saying. We have to go through process because more than anything, the preservation of peace. Now, a man have a right to defend himself if people are coming in there to murder, rape and pillage during time of war, a man have a right to pick up arms and defend himself. You know, once that uh, reality is no longer there, then we must return to the negotiation table because we have to move forward. There's a bigger um, game at play globally. Um, as Africans, we don't have this time uh, to be fighting brother to brother. 
you know, let us be um, serious. We can mobilize, uh, but we have to come to a peaceful resolution. Constitutional order. Having said that, um, uh, I believe that uh, this is a political um, issue. I don't think the final represent the entire region of Amara, just like uh, TPLF did not represent the entire uh, region of Tigray. So uh, there are elites who are um, who are uh, uh, you know creating propaganda, uh, saying uh, genocide and uh, having other uh, types of grievances uh, to find a way to uh, get into uh, power, and they're using uh, the regular uh, people of uh, Amara, uh, trying to entice this violence to face off the Ethiopian National Defense Force. No, I don't think the administration is creating anything. This is about power struggle, and Ethiopia has never really had a democratic uh, a, a, a leader who has given this much freedom. Uh, independent institutions are being created and they are viable. They're not totally um, they're not totally where they could be, but it's definitely the start. And this is a historical time for Ethiopia. So we're going to have elites from different parts of the world, whether it's Oromo, uh, Amara, or any other ethnic group who are trying to fight to gain some power. And in this case, if we're talking about the Amara region, uh, the elites are uh, using, uh, you know, a rhetoric such as uh, we are the owners of this country, we're the owners of Ethiopia, we are are, uh, the, we, we are going to take back our uh, our ancestors' land and so forth. These are the kind of uh, propaganda that they are uh, portraying, okay. basically offending over 80 uh, ethnicities in Ethiopia and trying to bring back something uh, that's of the past. Okay. So well, no, this let me, is let me, let me, being Ethiopia forward. Yeah, let yeah. me get Robel's uh, sentiments on that. I mean, it is part of the so, problem. I'm going to let um, ones, I'll post the, the interview in the description. Um, just, you know, I just wanted to give some uh, context around the, the reasoning um, so ones can hear the different sides and that it's not just cut and dry because all of them sound reasonable. Um, I will say that Ethiopia needs to get rid of the, the um, ethnic constitution, one Ethiopia. You know, I mean, it cannot divide. The, the, the nation by the tribal lines um, and I would say to the Amhara um, who are saying that uh, reclamation of the country and remembering glory of Haile Selassie's reign and Emperor Menelik reign and the, the progress unprecedented progress that happened in Ethiopia under um, that time period that the, the war is not with uh, weapons the war is culture the war is because we have to recognize that the Derg took the history, you know, that imperial history has been, um, you know, a lot of propaganda surrounding it. Were, uh, was Menelik a perfect man? No. Was Haile Selassie perfect? To I and I, yes. Ones may have their critique, you know what I mean? Uh, and they can be free, but most of those, uh, those challenges you know because i tell one what would have happened if Haile Selassie was able to implement his program of reform on un un challenge what would Ethiopia look like today and again you can only judge by what he accomplished in the face of such great opposition not only from Oromo or Tigray or the other kingdoms you know because the nobles he had to cut their power in order to, to provide a constitution you know what I mean? In order to rise people from peasants to citizens, he had to step on a lot of toes. Um, but this generation would not appreciate of that. To send girls to school, to send you know even your sons to school outside of the church. This was a fight. But this generation don't remember those times and the work that was put into. But imagine if the nation had just... Uh, you know, implemented his reforms on challenge. Um, there would be no countries that would be on par with Ethiopia on the planet. You know what I mean? And this is why we say, the highest of himself shall establish China. And we can say that with confidence again because of what was accomplished in the face of those great obstacles and challenges. Because 
you can see what a leader in their heart by their works what they represent you know and his majesty's work you know when you pile them up and this is where a lot of the detractors fail they look at one piece they're not looking at the whole of the work that he did and what he would have accomplished had he not been um so challenged you know uprisings and these things take resources um, and this is why I again I, I reiterate his majesty took a militant stand for peace to the extent that even his own family his uh, own advisors thought he was senile because he refused to use military power against the derg the creeping threat of the derg or against his university students um, to quell the rebellion he just went along and they, they said he was senile but he was taking a militant stand for peace going up into the high region you know seated on the throne up high remember you know what i mean he governed over the spiritual um as the head of the church and the military and the state so certain time in those latter days he put on that spiritual robe and you can see when you see hear his last utterances um you know he said if the rev people are for the revolution then i'm with the people because he also has said that the time has come where the emperor alone cannot, um, you know, the people must share in, in the governance of the nation. These things were said, but this generation would never hear that part. They will just hear he was a tyrant and this and that. So the, the, the well has been poisoned against his majesty. And this is why I'm choosing to write his life story to really um, outline for a new generation. Um, and so I want to just jump into chapter 22 of the book because again we said we we're going to do a deep dive into Menelik you know, let us know your thoughts this is a hot topic a sensitive topic um, however as Rastafari we have to educate ourselves um, as we seek to return home Shashamani is in a Oromo dominated area and just to show you the respect um, that I and I have even though it's been a rocky road at times in Shashamani there was no Rastafari that were killed, you know what I mean? Uh, the Naya Bingyos, we fly the line of Judah flag um, in the Romo region, you know what I mean? From that time to this time. And the ones them have that respect for the community, you know, there was very light damage done in some instances. Um, but for the most part, the community was spared. You know what I mean? When Shashamani became a hotbed and people were being murdered and all of that. And again, they show you the love that um, all Ethiopia have for I and I as Rastafari. So as we go home, we just want to be informed. And again, I caution my Rastafari family from taking sides. I think Rastafari, one of the things that is our role in this whole returning home to Africa is to be that peace, is to be that mediator between brothers and sisters to say listen one africa put down the guns let us not kill our brothers let us unite let us take the the, the resources let us harness let us raise the standard of living of our people we are in a living paradise africa is a paradise you know sunshine solar energy we can harness all of these natural resources from africa to create something the world has never seen is only humanity standing in the way of humanity and that is our role as Rastafari to, to come in with that message of love and unity so it's not for I and I to say yeah big up Fano or big up uh, the government or big up Tigray we are for Ethiopia we are for one Ethiopia one Africa you know Africa unite and this is why it's so important that we have our own platforms why because the time has come for the lions to tell our own story. And this is the lion's voice. Lion voice. Them could never conquer the mountains Thousands of years and counting Ethiopia rise again unto the world Now we are announcing Them a plan for war 
we are plan for peace And now we see him wanna go dismantle the base When the trumpet sound and the violence cease How we say one go build up the cities Well, them a plan for war We are plan for peace And now we see him wanna go dismantle the base Rastafari crown as the prince of peace Him tell the youths them fi build up them countries Well, solar energy that them a see The whole city powered by the sun's energy The road them make out the hemp and concrete Neighborhoods full of fruit trees that taste sweet The youths put down them guns, them harvest and a reap The beautiful gardens will line every street Tired of the bloodshed, them done with the beef Not even animals feed that them burn out the meat Well people say hi, they still I see I see Nile When they see say him a treat the dirt like a child Peace on earth from the banks of the Nile That's why we give him thanks in style See say Babylon now web and them a stockpile Babylon now we kid kill them brother and smile Ayana ya la ya Babylon a reptile Them a plant fish shed blood we got plants for the side